This is Up Close and Personal with Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. He's our guest today, and he's been a guest for many years. He's always been great to come on and talk to us. Sheriff, I'm going to ask you, sort of give us a miniature state of the county, uh, given the crazy atmosphere that we're all living in right now. I know these are challenging times for you especially. Yeah, we're juggling a lot of balls right now. Uh, I think, you know, sometime from now we're going to look back and go, this was one of the most historic times that, that we've ever lived in. You know, I guarantee you, most historic that I've ever experienced in 50 years of law enforcement. The COVID um, experience is, you know, you got to remember when the county issues these special orders, it's up to us and the rest of law enforcement to enforce those things. Mandatory masks, the beaches are closed, the parks are closed. Now you got restaurant closing times, a lot of things going on. So we've been able to walk softly through this and mostly do educational things. When we come across people that don't have a mask, you know, you need to put it on. If you don't have one, here's one we carry extra with us. Businesses, we understand, you know, they're trying to make money, but they got to go by the rules. So even after all this time, we've only had to issue, I think, two or three notice to appears because of serious violations. That, that's pretty good. Because yes. most people get the idea that if we don't comply with what the rules are to get ourselves out of this, we're going to be in it forever. Yes. So, you know, for the vast majority of people, they really, really have been good as far as complying. We did have an issue with large parties. We've been able to get that under control. So all in all, you know, that, that's not been a bad thing. In the middle of that, we had this, this horrible thing up in Minneapolis that took place which you know, spurred a lot of unrest across the country. And we had our share down here. Fortunately for us, not as bad as other places uh, because we, we haven't had the issues that other places have had. Um, West Palm had a, had a couple bad nights, but we were able to get over there and help them out and stop it. But for the most part, again, we were able to walk through this with the protesters, let them get their message out, but at the same time, make sure that the rights of everybody else were not infringed upon. You know closing roads down so people can't get to and from their work, their homes and stuff, just wasn't going to happen in the county. You know, I know that the highway patrol let them get down on 95, but that wasn't my decision. Yes. But we're just not going to let people close roads down. Uh, you know, there was a lot of controversy about 441 and Forest Hill. Look, you got a major hospital right there on the corner. How are you going to shut roads down? You know, you need to get to the emergency room. So, we, we worked through all of that. People were able to get their message out of it. At the same time, you know, we, we did what we needed to do to keep order in the county. So you, you put all, put those two things together and, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And now, you know, you're talking about uh, across the country, there's a call for a lot of police reforms. And, um, and I understand why. Then you toss a possible hurricane on top of that. All right. So, you, you, you know, we really have done a good job at adjusting. Actually, we're, we're very prepared for hurricanes. The only big adjustment was the shelters where we got to do social distancing. We got to screen people when they get in there. If anybody's sick, we got to quarantine them. So a little bit of extra effort uh, to that, but we're able to manage it. But those, that, that's a lot to have happen. And throughout this whole thing, it's the same story. The, the men and women of the sheriff's office, the law enforcement, leave their own families. They leave their families to come out here to make sure your family's safe throughout all of this. So, you know, I, I give them uh, so much credit for that. It's unbelievable. You know, and let me talk about these police reforms a little bit. And I understand why there's a call for that because look, there's 800,000 police officers in this nation, 800,000. No doubt that some of them are not good and we need to get rid of them. And with all those police agencies, there's a lot of them that needs some work to be done to get up to speed. But I watched the, the speech by President Obama, ex-President Obama, uh, where he talked about eight things that had to be done now. He called them eight can't wait. Eight things that had to be done now for a police agency to show that they had what it takes to, to serve the community. Yeah. Well, we've been doing those eight things for years. All eight of them. Every single one of them, no chokeholds, transparency, accounting for use of force, continual use of force, de-escalation, you name it. We've done that. Now, that doesn't mean that we're, we're satisfied with it because we're always trying to get better. We're an accredited agency, so we're always looking at our policies and procedures. 
So we're not going to stop just because we've got those eight things going, but people need to know that we have those in place. So yes. uh, we don't have to get up to speed on those. Um, there's a lot of call for defunding the police. What I, I don't call it defunding, I call it redirecting of resources. And two of the things they wanted to have happen with that was for some funds to be directed towards mental health and substance abuse. Well, if you remember right, I already started a mental health unit that addresses mental health issues and substance abuse. We seven already years, wasn't, it, wasn't it seven years ago, I believe, already? Uh, about, about six, yeah. So I have to take funds away from somewhere else to do that. We've already done it. And it's paid great dividends. And then one of, one of the things that, that I want to do if I'm able to get reelected is I want to double the size of that unit because it's paid such great dividends helping people out here, helping people stay out of jail, de-escalating situations. So we have that in place. The other thing was, you know, redirect some funds to social programs. Well, since I've been the sheriff, I've redirected $10 million worth of funds into social programs, work jobs, uh, the Urban League, the Boys and Girls Clubs, after school programs, Feed the Hungry, Feed the Homeless. Every, every year, twice a year, I send a list of projects over to the county commission to be approved. And usually it's around $600,000 to $700,000. But it's not taxpayer dollars. It's out of forfeiture funds. What doesn't cost the taxpayer a dime, and I'm still accomplishing the same thing. So they don't have to redirect any funds for me. I hope that, you know, this, you're saying that right now, we help get the word out that those are not taxpayer dollars. A lot of people like to try to, you know, to say, misguide others by saying that it is, but it really is right. not. Right. And there's a lot of things I use those funds for that to help not use taxpayer dollars. It's like, I've had to move my office away from Gun Club because they're renovating all of Gun Club. They're gonna gut the entire building. And I had to move my executive staff, which is about 15 people, and it could be more, to a building up in the gardens and right. find some office space that is secure. It's not, you know, first, first floor stuff, has the covered parking, a lot of things, right? It's not cheap, but I was able to pay for it out of forfeiture dollars. So it didn't cost taxpayers any money, right? So I try to be very mindful of that um, and, not, and not use taxpayer dollars unless I have to. Right. You know, there's some instances that just has to be done with Homeland Security and some other things. So, you know, as far as the police reforms are concerned, you know, we're, we're, we're where we need to be, but we're going to en enhance that. One of the things we're going to enhance is body cams. You know, um, there's a big call for that. Only 56% of the police departments in Palm Beach County have body cams. We've been wanting them for years. Uh, we just haven't been able to afford it. You know, I can't take money out of other operations just to get body cams. So right. it wasn't budgeted because there's a lot of other things that I need to buy that keep the organization going. So I just can't put those aside just because somebody wants us to have body cams. So now we're going to push it some money forward that is in the half cent sales tax. So it's not a matter if we're going to get them, it's a matter of when we're working on that. It's going forward at a pretty good pace. So we'll have the body cams and, and we like them. We're going to, we're going to get them. Will those, will those body cams have sound or not have sound? Yes, they will have sound. But yeah. the nice thing about it is if there's a good part about having waited this long is the, the, this generation of body cams now is so much better than two or three years ago. It's like laptops. The laptop that you and I are on right now, there's a better one, right? Of course. So Any second yeah. there's a new one coming out. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tomorrow there'll be a better one. So the latest generation of body cams do a lot of things for us that the, the normal ones didn't. Yes. So we're very happy of where, 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 where we're going to be on that. And just touching back on Homeland Security a little bit, you know, it's more important than ever. And, and here's why. We stopped, uh, and this was a couple, three weeks ago, one of the boats that we stopped uh, with illegals trying to get in here uh, had about 11 people on it, uh, some, some serious bad people. Uh, all 11 of them tested positive for COVID. So it's not just that these are bad people trying to get in here. They're also sick people. Yeah. That if they get in here now, they're going to spread the disease even more. So all over again, yeah. Homeland Security is as big or bigger than it's ever been, and, and they're experiencing that at the different borders. And of course, the ocean out here is our border. So a lot of things going on. Um, and uh, I'm, I want to I want to bring this one point up about Homeland Security, and we've 
we've said this before and we'll say it again, you know, the reason they're in West Palm Beach and not Miami is because of your relationship with them. And they gladly moved up here and, and are stationed with PBSO. I mean, uh, headquartered might be a better word, you know. Yeah. Is that right? And, and part of that is because of our advancement in technology yeah. with the Fusion Center of Real Time Crime. Uh, and our ability to do what we do with Homeland Security. And that's why the body cams are that last little piece of the technology that will fit right into this, uh, because th they'll be able to do some things other than just take a picture of what's going on. There's some other things that we can uh, use the, the, the video for to feed it into Homeland Security and real-time crime. So uh, it, it's gonna work out. I mean, it, I know there's some people out there that says, well, you know, his budget's so big, he could have found money here, found money there. You know, you can't shut down other parts of your operation just to get a piece of the puzzle, even though you'd like it, you still have to operate. So now we're, the, the money's been gonna come available and we're gonna get it. It may not be as fast as some people wanted, but you know, it is what it is. Yes, yes. Uh, is, there, is there anything that you see or envision going forward that you'd like to head off? Before? Well. It, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into a lot of political stuff here because, yes. you know, people know there's an election and, and they're going to make the decision on, you know, who do they trust to, to best protect them. It's, it's that simple. You know, I can sit here and talk for hours, but it comes down to a, a personal decision. Who's the best qualified? Who's the most experienced to protect you and your family? It's that simple. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go there a long ways, but I, I just want people to know that, you know, going forward, we're going to expand the mental health. We're going to get the body cameras. We're going to make sure that the reforms that need to be done going forward are there, expand on what we have, um, and um, just keep people safe in their neighborhoods like we've been doing. Our community policing effort is really good, uh, and, and we're going to expand on that. We, we, it verified how good we connect with the community when COVID hit because we were able to feed some people that, that didn't have the ability to feed themselves because they lost their jobs. Met a lot of doctors and nurses and first responders because they couldn't get to a meal at the end of the day, uh, got people to the testing sites. And that's because we were so connected to the communities with our community policing. So if anybody was to pop up and say, you know, oh, I'm going to do this with community policing and expanding, no, we're, we're very, very good at community policing. Very good. Well, that, and that's obvious on all the social platforms, which I see, and I'm always proud of that. I always, I don't see everything, but what I do see, I like to comment and and resend because it's important that everybody knows about the effort that's being put forth by PBSO. I think your community relations are second to none. And I, you know, I don't know about all of the police agencies all across the country, but I've never seen any with the outreach that you guys put out. Well, I mean, here, here's the reality of what's going on in Minneapolis and Portland and some of these other cities. The relationship between the citizens and the police didn't get that bad overnight, right? Yes. It's been for years. It's just that this one thing sparked it and put it over the top, right? So, and I, and I think that's why you haven't seen as, as bad a situation here is because not only PBSO, but a lot of the police organizations work very, very hard to stay in touch with the community, have that relationship. So we don't have these kind of problems, right? I try to tell people, don't make other people's problems our problem. If we've got problems, they come forward. You know, uh, several years ago, I started regional citizen advisory boards where in the different regions across the, 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 the county, my commanders meet with citizens and they talk, you know, what is it that you want to see from us? What is it that we're doing right? What is it we're doing wrong? What is it that you think we can do better? Yeah. So we get citizen input like that. Because that's another thing that, that people want to see out here in police reforms. So yeah, we're, we're already doing that too. I love it. I love that. Yeah. Well, so, Sheriff, I, I guess a good way to sum this up is that PBSO is uh, one agency that's prepared for 21st century law enforcement. No doubt. Um, and, and we're always, like I said, we're an accredited agency, which means an outside entity comes in, and looks at all our policies and procedures, and to see if it's by best standards across the nation and best practices. And, and we're always looking to make sure that, that we're going to do the best, have the best technology. Look, my goal always is and has been since I've been the sheriff or a police chief. I want citizens to get the best service, which means when they call and a deputy knocks on the door, 
it's the best trained, best equipped, most technologically advanced person to be able to handle their problem, right? Because nothing's more important to me than the safety and security of the people that live in this county. I've dedicated my life to that, 50 years of my life, right? And I wake up every day, that's what I think. You know, what, how can I make people's life better? Yeah, well, I think you've proven it with your performance and you've earned it as sheriff and, and uh, you will again, I believe. Uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it so much. I, I appreciate that. And then I appreciate what you do about getting the, the information out in a, in a correct fashion, because you know what happens in these elections? It, it, people that get in this against you when they don't have qualifications, the first thing they do is they go into the gutter. You know, it's all about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, da da da. You know, you can't go forward looking in the rear view mirror. No, you can't. It's, it's what, what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna to do to keep people safe and are you doing that? So again, I go back to it's a simple question for people to ask themselves. Yeah. Who's the best qualified to make the decision to keep me and my family safe? If it's me, great. If it's not, and, and, then that's fine. And the primary is uh, August 18th and I think there's yeah. what early voting going on now as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah there's, there's mail-in ballots, early voting goes through Sunday and then uh, Tuesday's the big day. So we'll see, we'll see what people think. I'm one of those old school guys. I like to go to the place on the day of the election, yeah, uh, election day and do my thing. That's me. That is, I'll tell you, the supervisor of elections is doing a great job. She's made the polling sites great and safe and the poll workers and everything. She's, she's doing really good. Ms. Sartori, yes, wonderful job. Yeah. Sheriff, again, thank you so much. And uh, I'll just wrap it up by saying you've been watching Up Close and Personal with Sheriff Rick Bradshaw right here on Palm Beach Live Work Play. Uh, this is our first ever Zoom room kind of meeting. And I think it went well. So we're gonna watch it on the, on the playback and uh, see how it goes here. Thank you again, Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. We'll do more of them. Great, great, looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, sir.